Okay, we're doing 51. Uh, don't forget, you can split up things inside of an integral if they're adding. So we're going to say uh, x over <clears throat> the square root of 4 minus x squared. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, dx, and then plus this, uh, the integral of 5 over the square root of 4 minus x squared. Dx. All right, let's attack the left side first. Uh, for the x one, that one's going to be a regular one because it has the x on top. Uh, I'll admit, I didn't look at any answers when I first did it, and this fooled me at first. At first, I was trying to make this one look like uh, the inverse sine. The, the, um, the antiderivative of this was inverse sine, but it's not. So um, then I tried u equals 4 minus x squared. When I do uh, the derivative... I get negative 2x dx, which works out because I have an x right here. There's my dx. I just don't have a 2, so I'm going to have to divide both sides by, by 2. So we have a 1 half right there, negative 1 half, and no more negative 2 right there. Okay, so let's sub our stuff in. We have, uh, I'm going to put negative 1 half out here because I'm going to take out that dx and put in this one, negative 1 half du. <clears throat> so then I have... Um, Minus that x, I'm not going to write because that x is with the dx. He's coming out with the dx, and I'm putting a negative one half du. So I'll put du right here, and then on the bottom I'm going to put a u because that's what u equals. Uh, let's rewrite that u. Kind of manipulate it so that rewrite what's inside. So now I have this. It looks a lot nicer, like not a lot cleaner. Uh, I add one to the negative one half, and then I divide by the result. So if I add 1 to this, that would be the same as adding 2 over 2, which would be u to the positive 1 half. And then we would multiply by the reciprocal because we're dividing by 1 half. What's the, what's the reciprocal of 1 half? It's 2. So I'm going to multiply the front of the u by 2, but then the 2 is going to be multiplied by this negative 1 half. And then we would normally put like a plus c right there. And then this would simplify, this one half times a two would go away. The negative is still there though. And then we would get, <clears throat> what's, what is u? Four minus x squared. And we're taking the square root of that. And it's negative, and we're adding the c. So this side right here, the antiderivative of this, the integral is this right there. And then we were going plus c because there's no lower and upper bounds. Now let's look at this nasty looking thing. There's two ways to do this. I'm going to show you the first way. This is the Rogowski way, and then I'll show you guys another way for, uh, with another formula. So the idea here is we want the bottom to look like, the top and the bottom to look like uh, what the antiderivative or what the derivative of uh, sine inverse is. Because if you take the antiderivative of sine inverse, you get... Um, what was it? 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared? Yes. That's what we want. So we want this to look like this. Well, that 5 is not a big deal because he's a scalar. He can go out here, and now I have a 1 up there. So now we're close. We have a 1 up top just like that one. See, if I make it look like this, I could take the antiderivative of this and just say that, it's, um, that it is uh, inverse sine. Actually, I wrote that wrong. Uh, that shouldn't be... The ant, the derivative, the integral. It should be the derivative. Man, I'm all over the place. This is what happens when Patey's on coffee. All right. <clears throat> so, how do we make this into a one, just like that? And this is weird. Uh, factor out uh, rad four. So, I take out a rad four, and what do you get? Then you get one right there, and then you'd have a one fourth right here. Now that's close, but now it messed up my x squared. I want an x squared there. This just says something squared has to be there. This is not something squared. This is one fourth times something squared. So we do another um, math trick here, another manipulation, and I'm going to say that that one fourth is inside of the squared, because uh, what is one half squared? It is one fourth, right? Right. So now I have that's a two out in front. Now, now I have something squared. I have a 1 minus something squared, just like this, 1 minus something squared. And I'm going to take this 2, and this 2 is on the bottom of that. Let's write it all clean-like. We have a 5 out in front, and then we have a 1 up top. On the bottom, we have a 2 times 
1 minus 1 half x raised to the second power and then dx. Oh my goodness, this is so hairy and nasty. Um, this 2, this 1 half right here, that's a scalar, so I'm going to take him out and put him underneath that 5. Oh, but now look at that, look at that. That is almost exactly this. We have something squared here. Um, so this is when you would use u sub. So you would put um, u equal to 1 over 2x, and then you would take the derivative of both sides, so you get du equals 1 half dx. And then uh, we sub in our, sub in our stuff, our um, u's. So we have 5 over 2 integral, and we have 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared du. Um, now when I plugged in the du, oh snap. I gotta make this uh, just dx. So if I multiply both sides by two, there you go. Okay, that's better. So there's dx equals two du. So when I plug in this du, that means I have to multiply this guy out here by the two. Man, lots of stuff going on here. Can you guys keep up? These go away. We have five times. <coughs> what is the antiderivative of this guy? Well, the derivative of inverse sine is that the same thing, so we know that we get sine inverse of u plus c. What is u? u is 1 half of x. That's what this says right here. So I'm going to write 5 uh, sine inverse uh, 1 half x, or, one, yeah, or we could just say x divided by 2. That would be the same thing, plus c. In front of this, uh, let me write the other guy that we found. We found um, negative the square root of 4 minus x squared. And then we'll, we'll put a plus sign right there. All right, that's your nasty-looking answer. Okay, so uh, did you guys see how it was done? Pretty, pretty ugly. Uh, I'm going to show you guys uh, another way to do this second part. <coughs> if you guys look at your formula chart, there is... Um, there's another formula that you can use whenever you have a number in place of that 1. Normally, there's like you want a 1 right there, and we did all that extra work to get rid of that 4. Well, there's another way to do this. The formula looks like this. Uh, the integral of 1 over the square root of a squared minus x squared. If you guys looked in the study uh, chart that I gave you with all those formulas, this is what it says. And the answer to this is sine inverse of x divided by a. This comes out so much cleaner. So if you have a number there and then you have this x squared right here, you don't have to do a lot of fancy stuff where I factored it out. Check it out. <coughs> what is a equal if we have a 4 right here? Dose. All right, yeah, we can't have that 5 here, so we're going to put that 5 out in front. So now we have this. That is the same as this, except the uh, a, a is 2. So this, we just use a formula, is sine inverse x over 2. So we get 5 times sine inverse x divided by 2. Way nicer, way prettier. It is worth it. It is worth memorizing this, I think.